Good morning. Good morning. This is where our editor will start. Our message today is your understanding isn't the last word. Your understanding of a matter isn't the last word. And we'll be talking about Proverbs 3 and 4. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your spirit. I pray for Bishop uh, Cairo right now as he's in the emergency room, Lord, and his heart issues are still bothering him, Lord, and, uh, you know, the cancer and all the things he's battling with. I thank you, Lord, that he's been such an inspiration to me. He's been the one that always talked me through whatever I'm going through. He's been that pastor with an ear to listen. He's been that pastor with sound advice to me, and he's been a friend. And Lord, I just pray right now that you just extend his life. There's so much more that we need to establish with our denomination. He's a foundation in our denomination, Lord. His wisdom, his memory, his uh, stories, the things he tells us, his, his uh, attention to customs and details. Lord, he's been very valuable to the EFBC. And Father, I pray for our sake that you keep him around a little bit longer. Yes, yes, and I pray for his healing. I pray for his finances. I pray for his wife. She's had heart problems too, Lord. Yes, we pray yes, for Lord. their family. And Lord, I ask that you touch each and every one of them. Not only then, anybody that's going through anything, Lord. Yes. Anybody that has a need, Lord, I pray mm -hmm. that you just touch them today. Amen. I pray for our nation. Is it, Its heart yes, is Lord. in trouble too, Lord. Yes. Our nation needs a heart. Yes. It needs a healing. Yes. It needs to uh, just to learn, Lord, that we are a unique nation. Yeah. There is no other nation like the United States of America. There's yeah. no blending of cultures and people like the United States of America. Yeah. And Lord, we got to realize that you've used everyone. Yes. You've used everyone to make America the melting pot it is. Yes. And I pray for forgiveness for past sins, and I pray that we'd be able to move on. And I pray yeah. that you encourage this generation. Yeah. This yeah. younger generation is yeah. on fire. This younger generation has got a strong moral sense. It may not even be a godly sense, but they have a moral sense. And we pray that they continually stand for what's right boldly. There's a difference between right and wrong. And Lord, that they see an injustice and they want to correct it. And Lord, I pray that you just continually move on this nation. And we pray that his finances be healed. We pray that people be able to work one job as they did in past years to support their family. People be able to afford health care. We pray for free health care. Yeah. We pray for free education. There's nations all around the world that have free education and health care. Yeah. And Lord, it takes care of its elderly. Uh -huh. And Lord, we, yes. that a person shouldn't have to lose everything they work for because yeah. of an illness. Yeah. Yeah. Or either their mate have to sell everything they have to take care of bills. Yeah. We pray for that injustice, uh -huh. that it be made right. Yeah. And I pray for our nation and all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So one thing you have to realize, uh, your understanding is not the last word. Yeah, that's right. Amen. As a pastor, preacher, you can't temper your messages because of flesh and blood that's right. That's right. over the spirit. Yes. The message has nothing to do, this message has nothing to do with what we as a church have been through for the past few months. Amen. And I just want to be clear on it, Amen. although people will think it is, but it's not. Amen. And all parties in the disagreement have moved on in Christian love. Amen. And I want to take some time to teach today Amen. about God's requirement Amen. for kingdom living. Amen. You know, I became a squad leader when I was 18 in the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, then on, I went to a sergeant at 19. So I've been in some kind of leadership position since about 1976. Okay. And I've been in some type of leadership position over somebody or had to make decisions. I've been in many public uh, forums. I've been a Habitat for Amenity, uh, all these different boards I've been on, uh, the EFBC board, and I've always been on different boards. So I've been on leadership all my life. Amen. All my adult life. Yeah. I've been in some form of leadership. Amen. There's never been a time that I haven't been on somebody's board or something Amen. that I can remember. Amen. And one thing I've learned is nothing is personal in life. Amen. You can't get personal. Amen. And there's people you love and people you care about but you always have to keep emotions out of it. Yeah. And when you deal with right and wrong or you deal with hurts and stuff, and I don't kick nobody to the curb because we disagree. Mm -hmm. There's nobody on this earth that I hold a grudge against. There's nobody. Amen. And I can say before God and before man, I'm not mad at anybody. Amen. Amen. Right. I'm not. And, I, and I really, I, I, that's just the way I live my life. Amen. Life is too short. That's right. And I knocked out 64 years and I don't know how many left. <laughs> so I can't spend my time mad and upset about stuff I can't change. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So it, I'm going to tell you, I preached about this song before. 
but it says it's ironic that Carly Simon's biggest hit was You're So Vain. And it was on an album titled No Secrets. And it said after all the inspiration for the song has been one of the biggest secrets in popular music history. Even today, the mystery has only been partially revealed. The staggering success of the song was deepened by the guessing game. After receiving the best new artist of the year of the Grammy for 1971, Simon released You Are So Vain in November of 72. The track quickly skyrocketed a billboard chart and stayed there for 17 weeks, peaking at number one on January 6, 73. So this is a second album, and this song, You're So Vain. And the lyrics go out there, you're so vain, you probably think this song is about you. Yeah. Don't you? Yes. Don't you? Yes. But it's not really. But your ego will make you think it's about you. And if you ever get a chance to play this song, you listen to it. And people have been guessing since 1971, nearly 50 years, who the song was about. Was well, since 72. And she's had multiple lovers. So if you study the song and the lyrics, you realize it's a little bit about all of them. Some people thought it was Mick Jagger. Some people thought it was Marvin Gaye. Right, right. Some people thought it was uh, James Taylor, her husband. Mm -hmm. Some people thought it was Warren Beatty, the actor. Mm -hmm. And she said Warren even called her and thanked her for the song, how vain he was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, the thing about it, he really thought the song was about him. And the song goes, you walked into the party like you were walking on a yacht. And it said, you thought every eye was on you as you walked in. And you had one eye on the crowd and the other eye on the mirror. Because you so vain. I bet you think this song is about you. Don't you? Don't you? And so as the lyrics go on, it talks about people always think things are about them that is not about them. And that's what I have to say. That, you know, and I remember when I was in the Army, I would write somebody up, they get a strike taken, two weeks of punishment or whatever, two weeks paid, 30 days paid, mm -hmm. and we go out and have a beer that night. Mm -hmm. right. Look, look, that has nothing to do with what you did there. Right, right, right. I'm still your friend, I'm still your sergeant, we can still party together. Yeah, right. But when you're wrong, you're wrong. Amen. Amen. And that's one thing you learn in politics and religion. Mm -hmm. There are no permanent enemies. Well, right, right. You say, how can they cuss each other and talk about each other like a dog and run the campaign? Then you turn around six months later and say, I support it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just talked about everything you knew about it, everything you could think about. It. And then you would stand at the convention and say, all of my supporters, I want you to support this person I just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Ted Cruz is a classic example. Mm -hmm. The man called his wife ugly said his father helped kill Kennedy and everything else, and he turned around and supports him to this day, and he doesn't even have any power. Amen. That just shows you nothing's perfect. Amen. 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 But uh, So people Amen. flatter themselves, whether good or bad, assuming everything is about them. Right. And when they don't see the complete picture, mm -hmm. I've been preaching and teaching nearly 30 years, okay. and people always receive a different interpretation on the same message yeah. I right. preach on the same day. I had people come up and tell me that really reached me where I'm at. Mm -hmm. You were talking to me. Mm -hmm. And somebody told you mm -hmm. what I've been going through. Yeah. And that has happened to me time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. Because God reaches you in your spirit. Mm -hmm. God reaches you in what you're going through. Yes. God will speak to you and you think the message is totally for you. And a lot of times when I'm preaching, the message is for me. God just happened to be Israel. Because God is telling me I need to get something together. I need to change some things, you know? And you be like, oh, that's a good message, Lord, I hear you. Amen, amen. And when you let the Spirit have his way. Yeah. He said, but I can't live my life putting any relationship over my relationship with God. Amen. It doesn't work inside for me. There's a, a, a sadness, a grief that brings you when you're a person that preaches and serves God or whatever. And you know that you're choosing flesh and blood over God, you can't get peace. Amen. God won't let you get peace. Amen. Amen. Sure won't. And then Galatians 4 16 tells you, Have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? Amen. People get mad at you and make you an enemy Amen. because you tell them the truth. Amen. I've been through that a lot of times. You know, as I look back over the 30 years of this ministry, I've had a couple of nephews leave, a sister leave, and different other ones you know, all over the years, you know. Amen. And I never took it personal. Amen. Some of them I even did the funeral. Yeah. And sure, it ain't nothing personal. Yeah. You know? But people always focus like, it's just me. 
And again, this is not about anybody that left recently and anybody going to leave tomorrow. <laughs> this is just about church business and about kingdom business. Yeah. But as a man and woman of God, you can't put your mate, your children, anything else over God. And that's that's biblical teaching. That ain't even I didn't even come up with. It. That's not my policy. That's not me. That's God. Amen. If God is not first, He will start adjusting and taking things out of your life until God is the only thing left. So you got to be careful. Because when you get to putting things over God, then God's going to have to start eliminating things that you think are bigger than God. 2 Samuel 23. I'm getting to Proverbs 3 and 4. <laughs> David's last words. 2 Samuel 23. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the last words of David. The inspired utterance of David, the son of Jesse. The utterance of the man exalted by the Most High. The man anointed by the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. The hero of Israel's song. The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. Mm -hmm. His word was on my tongue. Well, the God of Israel spoke. Uh -huh. The rock of Israel uh -huh. said to me. When one rules over the people in righteousness, mm -hmm. he rules with the fear of God. Amen. He rules Amen. with the fear of God. Amen. When you yes. do whatever you do uh -huh. unto God, uh -huh. righteousness uh -huh. has to that's be what rule. you stand for. Yes. Yes. Righteousness is what you stand for. That's, just, that's yeah. word. That's not uh -huh. me. Yeah. And when he rules in the fear of God, uh -huh. He's like a light in the morning sunshine. Yeah. On a cloudless morning. Yeah. Like the brightness after rain. Right. That brings grass from the earth. If my house were not right with God, surely he would not have made me an everlasting covenant. Right. That's right. That's right. If you ain't right with God, your covenant is not, it's not worth it. Yeah. You know, people wonder why we came up with a covenant system. Yeah when we started this ministry. Amen. Because that covenant is me, you, and God. That's right. And the body That's right. of Everlasting Word Church. Amen. And few people leave and don't come back and say goodbye. Which ain't no big thing. Sometimes they're in their feelings, sometimes they're upset, we'll let them go. But those that have came back and get the right hand of fellowship and they say goodbye in the right way, I've never begged nobody. Amen. Please stay. You know, I've never done it with a woman, and I ain't going to do it with a member. <laughs> Just say it like that. And some women left me, and there were tears in their eyes, but I, I had to let it go. Pride kicked in. <laughs> you know? I remember I was in junior high, there's this song, I want to go outside yeah. in the rain, right, right. by the group called The Dramatics. Uh -huh. This girl broke up with me in a basement park. <laughs> and everybody knew she was going to break up with me but me. But <laughs> All her little friends was in attendance. All of them was standing over there with her. And she said, oh, I don't like you no more. What? <laughs> I'm clean, got on my high karate and everything. You know? My Sansa belt pants. You know, I was shocked. My green suede shoes. One of the cleanest ones at the party. You done broke up with me. I don't know if I was ready to cry because of her or because she embarrassed me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I was talking to my cousin Andrew, and I said, man, I got to go. It was his house at the party, Andrew Edmondson. I said, man, I got to go. And then, I swear to God, I went outside and started missing. <laughs> it did. And I did cry. I don't think I cried. I don't know if I did or did. <laughs> but the rain sure did help. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, pride was in there. I couldn't cry in the basement. Yeah. And it was sweaty. They could have thought it was sweat. But you know, yeah, you know. But you know, you just, you got to push your way through. Mm. I'm just saying, you know, it's amazing how things come back to you over your life. But he said, if I wouldn't have made this cover and arranged and secured in every part, surely he would not bring to fruition my salvation. And grant me my every desire. I still say fruitation looks better. 
The king realized the lifelong principle of God's ways. If my house were not right with God, every being and object under God's control has to come under that. Yes. If you're not right with God. If you have an area you're not right with God, you bring a curse on all involved. That's Bible 101. You bring curses on the knowing and the unknowing. And there's a reaction for every action. There is in the natural and in the spiritual. The law is called cause and effect. Amen. Cause and effect. Everything has a cause and effect. Amen. So there were the cities of res refuge were for accidentally breaking the law. And when a dead body was found and there were no witnesses, the leader had to swear an oath they had no knowledge of the guilty. If a woman was raped, she had to report it as soon as she could and declare there was no witnesses. Okay. So when you study about the city of refuges, uh -huh. even when Joab killed Abner, Abner was in Hebron. Right, right. Hebron was a city of refuge. Yeah. Even though Abner had killed his brother after he begged him to quit chasing him. Right, right. He begged him to go find another man because Joab is going to be upset at me. Yeah. But he kept begging him, man, go fight with somebody else. I'm a soldier. I'm a warrior. You're not going to win this. And he said he just took the butt end of his spear yeah. and stabbed him. Yeah. He didn't even use the weapon part. Right. And it went through him. That was God yeah. that killed him to let him know, leave Abner alone. Abner's still in my will. Yeah. Then Joab called a secret meeting. Meet me in Hebron. Meet me in the city of refuge. Yeah. Because Abner knew the law of God. Yeah. So he assumed that he could meet him in the city of refuge and be all right. Because he knew wouldn't nobody attack me in the city of refuge. That's law. That's right. So... That's why God's word, as you study the law, mm -hmm. it shows you he's very clear about his laws and his punishments. Oh, yes. His laws and punishments. Mm -hmm. His law and punishment supersedes flesh and blood. Yes. Every time. Yes. But evil men are all who cast aside, are, are to be cast aside like thorns, which are not gathered with the hand. Whoever touches the thorn uses a tool of arm or shaft of a spear and they're burned up where they lie. Evil must be purged like thorns in a fire. The question becomes what about mercy and forgiveness? How many times do you forgive? 70 times 7 has been the quarter. It comes into play. But the other side of the coin is mocking God by deliberately repeating a forgiven sin. Told you many times you can't smack me in the face and ask me to forgive you. Smack me in the face and ask me to forgive you. There has to be a correction. I'm not obligated to forgive you if you keep repeating the same behavior. That's right. It has to be addressed. And like I said, this is about anybody that attends the everlasting word church, anything you do. I'm not talking about past members, I'm talking about the law of God. You're not talking about myself. Amen. Awesome. Numbers 23, 19, God is not human, that he should lie. Not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak it and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? God don't play. That's what he's saying right there. God don't play. Galatians 6, 7 tells you, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. You know, it's amazing how people will get mad at you for something they did. Yes. And blame you. And they turn around and make you think, well, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe you got to check yourself. Well, what did, what did I do wrong? You go into a conversation knowing that you have right on your side, and you walk away thinking, well, what did I do? You got to be careful. People put their craziness on you. You have to double check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. It's amazing that if this has happened to me time and time again in my life, where people have made me feel guilty for being the right one. And when I know I didn't do wrong, when you got me, you got me. Nine times out of ten, I admit it. 
Sometimes I just go down with the flames. I'm not going to admit it. I don't care what you say. <laughs> you know? But if you got me, you got me. <laughs> you know? Then people think that omission and confession are the same thing. Confession is I come to you before something happens. That's confession. Omission is you caught me. And I'm sorry. You see the difference? Mm-hmm. Just because you say you got me, don't mean you confess it. Because you'd have kept doing what you're doing if you wouldn't have got caught. Right? That's the bottom line. You was enjoying what you was doing and you'd have kept doing it if you wouldn't have got caught. So never mistake a confession for an admission. That's all I'm saying. So like I said, I'm just teaching. This, this is tight and it may not be right for some, but it's right. Yes. Amen. Yes. And some are gonna be personal, and I'm gonna hear it again. But you know, I could give a fat right. I could care less. Let me stay safe. <laughs> but those of you who've been knowing me over the years, hey, <laughs> you ain't never seen me crying about how somebody feels. Right. There's only one person that gets me upset how they feel, and I'll work with that. Amen. <laughs> There's only one person that can make me change something if I got to. Yeah. It's hard to deal in the house when a woman is mad at you. <laughs> but other than that, anybody else, you go your way and I go my way, no love lost. Amen. Amen. Then we talk about wisdom. Mm-hmm. It bestows well-being. What does it mean that wisdom is a principal thing? Wisdom is a divine insight concerning how we should live and what brings success. Wisdom is God's answers and solutions to our problems. Wisdom is God's advice concerning how we should live and conduct our affairs. Wisdom is that guiding light. Wisdom. You know, sometimes wisdom is, you know, the old folks used to say, bought sense is the best sense. A hard head make a soft behind. Some of y'all know. I remember all the time before I got a whooping. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't beat you. I'd be like, we ain't got to be friends. Put that belt down. <laughs> you know? But you know, they, they, I, every whooping I got, they give me that little piece of advice. I'm going to beat you so the police won't beat you. I'm like, hey, well, let them catch me. <laughs> That's a different situation. I got a better chance of not getting caught. I live with you. You got me. <laughs> But you know, so I'm just saying, wisdom. Amen. Proverbs 3, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart. Amen. For they will prolong your life many years yeah. and bring you peace and prosperity. Amen. So many people suffer for the lack of wisdom. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason it's called gambling. Gambling, you play games of chance for money, Or you found gambling on horses or cards or wages or football. You stake money on something. You try one's luck. It's a gamble. That means you're not guaranteed to win. You take a risky action in hope of a desired result. You take a chance. Well, sometimes it comes up crap. Sometimes you're lost. You know? That's why it's called a gamble. You know? Now let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. We may not all be rich and we may not all have a, 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 a national knowing. But is your name in good standing? When I first started preaching in this city, my last name had a lot of things attached to it. There was a lot of drug dealers. There was a lot of drunks. There's a lot of people, you say you're a Donaldson fighting, arguing folks, that name was different. But over the last 30 years, Manuel and I both being Bishop Donaldson, we changed that name. Amen. Those that do, it's not what it was. I'm not saying it's all cleaned up, there's still on those out there with issues. But people would say, they tell my daughters, oh, you just started. They can tell, because your cousin's wide open or somebody else, they, they know that. But they expect them to live a certain manner because they are associated with my name. Simple as that. I have a nephew that has my exact name. I tell him all the time, boy, protect my name. 
That's my name you got. Yeah. Yeah. On Facebook, he's Jeffrey Donaldson. On Facebook, I'm Bishop Jeffrey Donaldson. Yeah. I kept getting his little friends sending me stuff and everything, and I had to establish Bishop Jeffrey Donaldson. Amen. Amen. And so far, Jeffrey has protected my name, and I love him for it. I know that's Simple right. as that. Yes. But, but that's why a, a good name is fake. Amen. Yes. That you know if I tell you something, I'm going to do what I say. Uh -huh. That's a good name. Amen. And see, sometimes I feel... In fact, of you know, through my military training and stuff, you, you you think that people can do stuff without you double checking them, right. mm -hmm. because in the military, you're told to do what's right because it's right, right. Mm -hmm. and you don't need nobody following you around double checking everything, mm -hmm. because they got a system of punishment to let you know if you don't do what's right, they're gonna get your attention. Yeah. Right. But being a self-starter, you tend to let people do their own thing. I don't micromanage anybody when they're doing something. If that's your gift, if that's what you're doing, I'm not going to follow you around and tell you, I want blue tablecloths, I want silver bells. That, that, that's not me. You can have the wildest colors, look like psychedelic 60. If that's what you come up with, I'm going to sit right there. People now afraid to have a rainbow. God had it first. Simple as that. They can claim it's for them, but they didn't originate it. They did not create it. So proudly wear your rainbow. It is a good conversation for him. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that ain't for that God. That's for my God. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. This rainbow was originated. I'm talking about the original owner. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That rainbow represents him. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's a promise. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 That's the reason the rainbow is so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. You see a good rainbow, yeah. it gets your attention. Yeah. Every time. You can be driving down the avenue. Oh, look at that rainbow. <laughs> it gets you. But there's a promise. There ain't no pot of gold with no leprechaun. There's a God at the end of that rainbow. And there's a God at the beginning of that rainbow. So don't let nobody... You watch the old movie from the 40s and 50s. They call them the gay bachelor. And the gay Christmas movie. All that stuff was before. You let people capture something that was before. You can boldly say, I'm happy. I have a cousin named Gay that goes by her middle name Lynette. She won't let nobody call her Gay. Mm -hmm. But 1963 or so, it was a good name. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, don't, don't let people put you in something that doesn't belong to you. Amen. Have a good name. In the sight of God first and then man. Amen. Now here's the verse I want to focus on. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. See, my understanding would lead me astray every time. Submitting is not about just marriage. A submitted life is a safe life that will keep you from the pit of hell. See, some people get to a place where they don't fear God. They're more worried about human beings' reaction than God's reaction. And as a believer that confesses Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got to ask yourself, what does God think? Yes. What is God's opinion? Amen. And some of them even try to hold on to their morality. Mm. Well, didn't I tell you something that was still more? <gasps> you may have told me, but the vessel was tainted. Mm. You know, you could, I'm just, it, it blows my mind that people want to, there was an old Cosby episode when his daughter came home married and he had an argument mm -hmm. with her husband. So y'all just showed up and said, I'm married. He said, but I didn't get a chance to walk my daughter down the aisle. I didn't get a chance to say, you know, help plan the wedding. He said, this marriage is like you serving me. Defined. He asked him, what's your favorite meal? What do you deserve? What do you love? Mm -hmm. And then he said, the man named all his favorite stuff. Mm -hmm. He said, now take that and go out in the back and get that old garbage can lid. Put all your favorite foods on it and try to serve it to me. Mm -hmm. He said, that's what it was like. When you just married my daughter and didn't give me a chance to be yeah. in any of them. He said, it ain't nothing about you. It's what you took from me. Uh, so even though you may have a moral center, you may think you know right and wrong, mm -hmm. but if you're serving it to me on a garbage can, Amen. then I can't receive it. Amen. You have to look at the vessel. You have to look at the one that's trying to tell you right and wrong. Amen. And Amen. once you compromise your right and wrong, mm -hmm. you're a cloud without rain. Ooh. Simple as that. 
I seen the president honoring Jesse Jackson the other day. Your long years. And the first thing that come to my mind, Jesse had a baby out of wedlock. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you missing Jesse Jackson's name, my first thought is he did not finish well. He didn't finish well. All the good accomplishments, all he's done were great. But he did one thing. He brought shame to the name of God. He brought shame to his wife. He brought shame to his children. He brought shame to those that loved and respected him. Bill Clinton's whole presidency is remembered for one thing. All the good things he did, but everybody focuses back on that one thing. That's why he says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. Do not be wise in your old eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns would be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Yes, Lord. And then he goes down to this. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. Do not resent <laughs> and rebuke. It, resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father delights in his son, delights as the son he delights in. God disciplines you like a father yeah. or a daughter because he loves you. Yeah. You know, one thing I learned when I was a kid, when you take your punishment sooner, mm -hmm. they give me a quote. You want a month with no TV or a spank? Mm -hmm. Give me the spank. Mm -hmm. yeah, hurry up before it get dark and I got to be back in the house. <laughs> you know, that, that was my guy. If it's going to take a beating to get me to where I need to get, don't take my privileges for two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. You know? I remember sometimes my kids would be on punishment so long I'd have to give them privileges back about two weeks before the report card. So I could have something to take. Because <laughs> they all already on punishment. Jameer, if you ever see him write something, he got one of the best handwritings you ever seen. I made Jameer write sentences for years. And then, oh, there was no dot on that. I rip it all up. It, that, that loop looks like it. Nope, that, that looks like an eight. That doesn't look like it. Nope, mm -hmm. rip the whole paper. Start all over. And now, if you ever see anything Jameer writes, it just flows. <laughs> What's your saying? Um, Jaria told me one time she went through the whole seventh grade year without watching TV. I told her, what? I didn't even realize I took the whole year from her. So, you know, I mean, I, my standards hasn't changed over my life. It really hasn't. What did Beretta say? Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. <laughs> yeah. But he says, blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver. Yields better returns than gold. She's more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire compared with her. Long life is in her right hand. Her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways. All her paths are peace. She is a tree of life for those who take hold of her. Those who hold fast will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set heaven in its place. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided. The clouds let drop the dew. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discernment. Don't get too far from wisdom. Don't get to playing games with wisdom. Don't get too far away from God's teaching. Don't get too far away from what you know God has already said. If you know God has already told you that, why do you do it? You know. This, you can fall into sin not knowing. But knowingly going to sin, it said if a man sins against a man, he can ask the man for forgiveness in God. But if a man sins against God, then who do you ask forgiveness for? When he's the one that's the judge and the jury. Wow, sound judgment and discernment. Sometimes people just make crazy decisions. And they give you crazy answers. You know? That's infuriating. When somebody give you a stupid answer for doing something stupid, it just takes you through the roof. What does me? <laughs> They will be life for you, an ornament of grace around your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. 
When you lie down, you'll not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Tossing and turning on your bed because you know you're not right. Tossing and turning because you know that day is coming. And especially when you do something with somebody else. Sins that you know about are pretty good. You're pretty safe. Unless the Holy Ghost comes on you and you start confessing them. Other than that, but any sin committed with another human being yeah. is always has a chance of being exposed. If y'all rob a bank together, if y'all do whatever, if y'all paint graffiti, as long as somebody else knows it. What happens when a criminal's caught? And he think he faces, I got some information. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can I cut a deal? Yeah. Yeah. I give you every push. I was stationed in Germany, this dude was he was the sharpest soldier we had. Sharp, dressed every day, clean. This dude got busted for selling drugs. He'd been in Germany like eight years and wouldn't transfer out. He was the biggest drug dealer in the military. And when they busted him, we were all shocked. And then I watched him come back for trial for all my friends. And they'd ask him, how do you know this? And he said, I, I sold him the drugs. And uh, how do you know he, he bought that from me? He bought this from me. That man, they brought him back time after time. They had about three different friends that I served with that all went to jail and were kicked out the army because of him. And he was the one that supplied them with hash and stuff in the first place. And they brought him back for each trial in his uniform, sharp looking there. He was a sharp soldier. And turned them in. Yes, Lord. And cut a deal. I don't know what his deal was, but I'm just saying. Whenever you enter in something with somebody else, it's always somebody can tell them. Why does the mafia kill people that kill other people for them? No witness. That's right. Right? Right with Jack Ruby and Kennedy and all that. Hey, Oswald got killed and all that. Why? There was more to tell. Right. He never made it to a courtroom. And then Jack Ruby. You're going down the line. There's a lot of coincidences in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mamela Monroe found the OD. She knew a lot of secrets. So your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side and he will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it's in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you. When you already have it now with you. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. Amen. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways, for the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. People want to pray for you when they live in foul. I prefer you not. I really don't. I got my own demons. Don't pray for me. Don't try to get me in a prayer when you live in fire. You just making my temperature rise. And I've got to work with all this and bite my tongue and keep from calling you all the things I'm thinking about. So, you know, don't, don't come all holy to me when we both know you're fine. But, but it takes the upright into his confidence. God, I tell you things. God doesn't let things sneak up on you. You, the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, mm -hmm. but he blesses the home of the righteous. Mm -hmm. Things don't go right for you. You never can quite get to where you want to be. You lose things that you had. Mm -hmm. There's a curse on you. But listen to this. It's a curse on the house. Yes. Yes. Your decision affects other people. Yes. Yes. And again, let's not be vain. Yes. This ain't about one person. Amen. This ain't about something in the past. Yes. This is teaching for today, for right now. Amen. Sin can block your blessing. Yes. Sin can block a ministry. Yes. Sin can block a home. Yes. Sin can block your life, your health. Yes. Sin can cause a curse to come on right here in God's word. Yes. I can show you that over and over again when he says you are a curse. You are a curse. You are a curse. And everybody around you, the sins of the son will go down to the father and all that. But the son has to break that curse and say, not my house. Not my house. Because he says he will not put the sins of the father on the son, right? You break that curse. Or that daughter. He blesses the home of the righteous. He, he mocks proud mockers. But show favor to the humble and the oppressed. 
The wise inherit honor, but fools only get shame. That's deep. What? You just look like a fool. It's rough to look like a fool. Especially when you think you're wise. And you think you got it all together. Whitewashed tombs full of dead bones. This is what he's talking about. Fools only get shame. All the shame you go through. That's why the Bible tells you to count up the cost. Is it worth it? Is what you're going to lose worth what you gain temporarily? And adding to that equation, your soul. Is what you're going to do worth your soul? I don't care how fine, beautiful, muscular, whatever it is, is it worth your soul? How much money is sitting on the table, robbed the bank, ain't nobody looking, is it worth your soul? And people tell you they don't agree with that. They don't feel that's right. That law is not right. It's not no love in that law. You got to love everybody. God loves everybody. Don't tell a lie on God. God will show you all through the Bible. He'll love who you want to love. He'll hate who he want to. He'll punish who he want to. He makes the rain fall on the just and the unjust. He's very clear. He'll let the weeds grow up with the tares. Just because you're prospering don't mean that the harvest is not coming. So I'm just saying, fools only get shame. That's right. It tells you to get wisdom at any cost in Proverbs 4. Listen, my son, to my father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I will give you sound learning. So you do not forsake my teaching. For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and he said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. My daddy taught me from a young age is what Solomon was saying. Amen. He told me from a young age, my daddy had been through it all. Adultery, murder, rape, you name it. I don't know if he raped or whatever, but you know, everybody didn't agree. I can be sure when you break it and pillage in a village, mm -hmm. you know, that was their custom. Yep. So I won't put it on him if he don't, but the preachers have said they know he committed at least nine of the Ten Commandments that he wow. did. They're not sure if he disobeyed his parents. Mm -hmm. But every other one you can pretty well put on David. Mm -hmm. He's done them all. Amen. Yeah. And yet he said, I got a heart after the Lord. Yeah. Because the Lord changed his heart. Mm -hmm. And he learned to line his heart up with God. Yeah. You can make mistakes. But line your heart up with God. Yeah. You can be wrong, but line up with God. Yeah. When you make a mistake, yeah. confess. Yeah. What, what did Joshua tell Aiken? Son, get the Lord some glory. Yeah. Tell him what you've done. Yes. Aiken stood there while they went tribe by tribe by tribe by family by family by family. And then the, the light of the Lord is shining all over him. Joshua was standing there like, we done went through everybody and the Lord has kept you for the last person. Yes, yeah. Even those in your house. Now we looking out at it. You and I both know God said it's you. Get the Lord some glory and tell the truth. Amen. And what did he do? He gave the Lord glory. He told the truth. He admitted what he did. He didn't confess. He admitted what he did. Yes, told him where he was buried at. Yeah, sure did. Then his whole family was stoned. Yeah. They all didn't steal the silver. They all didn't steal the garment. No, but that curse was on that family. Yeah. Because they were in the tent when he dug the hole. Mm -hmm. They helped them cover up. Yeah. They helped them hide it. None of them went to Joshua yeah. and said, they could have stole something that the Lord said, don't steal. Yeah. So it caused his whole family yeah. to be cursed and killed. Yeah. So don't tell me God, God, God always forgive you. Know? He, he can forgive you, but he's still going to punish you. You can contract AIDS or whatever, some disease, and still be forgiven of the Lord. Yes, but the disease is not going to automatically disappear because you confess. Mm -hmm. right. There's still retribution. Mm -hmm. And he says, get wisdom and understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she'll watch over you. He's speaking like a woman or something. Yeah. Get wisdom. Wisdom the finest. Get, get wisdom, boy. What's wrong with you? Protect her. Don't let nobody get next to your wisdom. Watch out for her. Love her. Watch over her. I got your back, wisdom. Ain't nobody going to come up on you. You know? The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. There it goes back again. Get understanding. 
God don't play. Mm -hmm. God don't play. Amen. Simple as that. You need to understand that. As you sow, so shall you be. Amen. Cherish her, and she will exalt you. What? Oh, man, check this out. If you cherish wisdom, mm -hmm. she gonna turn around and fall in love with you. Amen. Yeah. Woohoo! Thank you, wisdom. You wanna make wisdom love yeah. you? Do the right thing. Yeah. You, you want to make wisdom brag on you? Yeah. Do the right thing. Yeah. You want to make wisdom look at you and see favor? Yeah. Do the right yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 He's breaking this thing down like a relationship with you and wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. You got somebody you in a relationship with and they do the right thing and they make you happy? Amen. You know, I'm not going to say you ain't going to have days you disagree. Mm -hmm. But do they make you happy overall? Amen. And that's what wisdom is like. Mm -hmm. A tender lover, a tender friend, a tender... Yeah. Like a brother that's closer than any other. You know, wisdom. Then he says, cherish her. And she will exalt you. Mm -hmm. If you follow her, you will be lifted up. Mm -hmm. If you get close to wisdom, wisdom will make your name better. Yeah. Wisdom will make your res your reputation better. Mm -hmm. Wisdom will make you make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Get close to wisdom. Yeah. Cherish her. Embrace her. Give wisdom a big old hug. Yeah. Yeah. Fair hug. Yeah. I was watching this show where they redid a car for Shaq and uh, Foose Auto's uh, overhaul. And he grabbed Foose when he saw the car and picked him up and jumped up and down like a big bunny. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, this is the way I celebrate when I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and Shaq jumped all over that garage with this girl, man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then he told everybody, everybody jump. The whole garage got to jump. <laughs> this is how I celebrate when I'm happy. Wow. He said, embrace it. And she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. Mm -hmm. Listen, my son. Accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. Yes, How many people that don't have wisdom die early? Mm -hmm. You out there late at night and something to bullet fly your way because mm -hmm. you're a young teenager. Not blaming them for what happened, but you're in a place that wisdom would tell you don't be. Mm -hmm. Your parents can be working late. You might have a single parent, and you out there two or three in the morning, bullets start flying, you get caught up. Somebody said, let's go rob somebody. We'll put our purse together. You get caught up in those things. And then you have a short life. Or you spend the rest of your life in jail. Yeah. Which is basically a short life anyway. Yeah. Amen. You know? Glory to God. And then people want to blame people in your, who taught you and instructed you. Every person makes their own choice at some point in their life. Amen. I don't care if everybody in your house was a pusher, everybody in your house was a mugger and a raver. There's a point where you have to make a decision. Are you going to go that way? Amen. Are you going to follow that curse? Are you going to break that curse? Don't ever let nobody make you feel guilty because somebody made choices. Amen. That they made. Amen. Kids tell you you ruined their life, you divorced their father. <laughs> you didn't know what it was like. You know, you got to let them things go. Get with them. He said, I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. You stumble. The people tell what, what happened when you fall into sin? He stumbled. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the ways of evil doers. Avoid it. Do not travel in it. Turn from it. Go on your way. Look, he's over and over. Get away from evil. Don't get to thinking you can get close to evil. Why do moth, moths always catch on fire? They try to get as close to the flame as they can. I got a zapper in my backyard, and that zapper kills more moths than mosquitoes by far. They just, that little blue light, just, oh, there's a blue light. You know what I'm saying? Zap. You hear that when the June bug hit it, but like my house is on fire. It just fries the June bug. You, you could be sitting and tell what's just got zapped. <laughs> Flies a little boy to the moth. You know, you can tell. I, I, I've been here to zapper for last summer and this summer. And I'm sitting there, you see fire coming out of this thing. <laughs> you know? That zapper, it, it kicks a lot of power out there, boy. I a little fire break up. That moth got you. That's a moth every time when you see flame. <laughs> that's a moth. And they say, like a moth drawn to the flame. <laughs> That's the reason that person wrote that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do not let your foot be in the path of wicked. Walk with evil. Don't walk in the way of evil. 
Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way, for they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. You know, evil people like other evil people. They tell you that crazy rule that there's an honor among thieves. Let one of them thieves get sick with a pocket full of money. Y'all doing drugs together, look like you old D, and the first thing they're going to do is take the drugs off you, swing you by the emergency room and kick you out the door. They're going to make sure they wheel you in there and take care of you. No. If you're in the hospital, they'll go back and rob your house. There are people that look in the paper to see when the funeral is going to be. So they can go rob somebody's house during a funeral. You know, I'm just saying, evil is evil. Woo. They can't rest until they find some evil. They up all night. Why are they, why are they out there all night long? I had, I had a relative tell me that he was making over $10,000 a month robbing and stealing to buy drugs. I tell him, man, you know what kind of business you could have? If you bring in over 10 grand a month tax-free, he told me that he went into Chicago and was robbing drug houses. He would just kick the door in and start shooting. He said, I don't know if he killed somebody or not. And he was, his thing was robbing drug dealers. He said, when he's in jail, somebody look at him and say, hey, you look for me. No, you don't know me. He said, he dropped his head and keep on walking. He said, he didn't associate with nobody. He didn't talk with nobody. But you know, that's a crazy thing. If you Just think, if you could be evil and raise over 10 grand a month tax-free and do it for years, and it's all going in your nose, that's crazy. I never understood a drug addiction like that. You know, you can snort some cocaine 15 minutes and you need no, another one. Man, I could buy a case of Boone's Farm or Wild Irish Rose. I used to have that debate with my brother. I can get a whole case of Wild Irish Rose. You get drunk every day through the month for what you spend for that stuff going up your nose for 15 minutes. You know, and I thought I was better than that. You a junkie, but I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> what I'm doing is legal. You a fool. <laughs> you, know, you, know, so, you know, you can have a little bit of pride at being a drunk. <laughs> and they always tell me, yeah. Then I had one relative sitting there with me at the table mixing cocaine and heroin together. It was one was brown, one was white. He talked about he mixing boy and girl. I sit there and watch this fool snort that and watch his face change. He kind of went to the nerd and came back. Wow, that's some good stuff. Man, your heart almost stopped. <laughs> I sit there drinking my bull. Boy, you crazy. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, thinking I'm better than him. And then they do jail time for 10, 12 years, totally clean. And a month after they get out, they back addicted. That's just stupid. There's no nice way to say it. You know, my grandson get on me all the time by saying stupid. Oh, you can't say that. Yes, I can. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they eat the bread of wickedness. They drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever bright till the full light of day. A brand new day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them from within your heart. For they are life to those who find them, health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Never allow anyone or anything to wound your heart. It's the seed of the soul. Things that go to your heart hurt. People disappoint you, people wrong you, that's that's a heart thing. You know, it takes you days, weeks, months, sometimes you never get over it. When somebody does you wrong, it's a heart issue. That's why you guard your heart. Yeah. You try to let people in, you think, I, can, you know, I can trust you and that you can do. And I'm not saying go through life not trusting people. But it tells you here, guard your heart. Never put everything you got in flesh and blood. All flesh and blood can disappoint you, including you. I tell somebody. Somebody. My heart is like a Timex. My heart is like a Timex. It can take a licking and keep on ticking. Tell you, boys, those of us that grew up with the old wind-up Timex, 
you could drop them, you could do everything else, that bad boy, the face would be broke off of it or whatever, that type of, you could hear it in your pocket or your purse, tick, 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 tick. You ain't done nothing, tick, 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 <laughs> you know? Yeah. They can roll up with their Rolex and their Rolex to be have to be repaired. That old twenty dollar Timex is still hanging in there. I'm telling you, and sometimes your heart got to be like that Timex. It may need winding up every now and then because you let it get down too low. But if you wind that bad boy up, it, 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 it's simple. It ain't got all these gears and digital and all that. It's a simple thing, just minor little gear. Wind your heart up and let it start ticking again. Don't let nobody go to your heart. Don't let nobody get to your heart. And keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. So you get, you got to keep doing what you got to do. If everybody else falls beside you, everybody else is doing something wrong, you keep serving God. You keep doing the right thing. Because you get focusing on humans. Like when you run a race, if you turn to look, you're going to lose. You got to keep running. You know, you don't think... Only time a player turns around in the NFL when he know he done smoked somebody. I remember mean, I was watching the Super Bowl and Leon Lett had the ball and he's running for the goal with the ball holding up. He turned around and looked and the man caught him and knocked it out of his hand. And they were up by two or three touchdowns. The coach still cussed him out. You always keep paying attention to him. Tuck that ball, you know. Lett was so tired one time he was running the touchdown, he laid down about two yards for the goal. They didn't even touch him. Let just was out of energy. That big man was not used to running it. He got right to the goal, <laughs> fell down. <laughs> and they teased him about that for years. He just couldn't, he couldn't go another two yards. <laughs> I'm just saying, keep running your race. Don't worry about other people. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Don't worry about what they're doing. People want to compare. You did this for that one. You did that one for them. You run your race. If I did something wrong, God would judge me. Amen. Simple as that. Amen. Don't try to tell me what I did wrong. I'm trying to save my soul. I'm just saying. And I got to give an account for your soul. Amen. So I'm trying to keep mine together. Don't be giving me stuff I got to try to help you with. Because I done told you, when they play that video up in heaven, <laughs> about your sin, Lord, back it up a little bit. You can see I told them. <laughs> That one ain't mine now. Everything I did, don't even play it, I confess. But what they did, go on, let it roll. <laughs> let everybody see it. But you gotta fix your gaze straight ahead. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet. Be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. You know what it takes to just plan to do wrong? It takes planning to do wrong. You can fall into sin. Anybody can fall into sin. <laughs> it was funny one time uh, when Janice and I first got married, I had a Grand Prix with Power Mill. <coughs> and this woman was walking down the street with hot pants or whatever, and I took the mirror and adjusted to see her. And Janice said, I saw that. So what? What? What did I do? I saw you turn your mirror. <laughs> I was busted cold. I was like, oh, no, I'm just trying to adjust it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, she must have been cold. I didn't even know she saw. I'm so focused on this woman and everything else. And I done took my finger and moved the mirror. You know what I'm It got busted cold. So sometimes, and I had to admit it. All right, you got me. <laughs> you know. But that wasn't her fault. That was my problem. Amen? Because Texas is hot. She was trying to be comfortable wearing the least she could. <laughs> you know? That's what I assume. <laughs> Oh man, when we go back to my first point, we go back to Galatians 6 7. Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. As a man reaps what he sows. There he is it. Man, there's a lot of pressure on you. I remember one time I was a little kid, I used to make uh, rings for the pop that you had a pull ring. And I took one off and was wearing it on my finger for a ring. And I couldn't get it back off. I tried to soap it off, I tried to rub it off, and then my finger started turning purple. And for some reason, uh, Robert, the guy that was raising me, he grabbed my hand for something. And he grabbed my hand and tears came to my eye. And he looked down and saw my finger was purple. <laughs> and, all that, and that little pop ring was stuck on me. And he's like, why didn't you tell me? So I didn't want to get in trouble. And you know, so I'm running around here suffering for days with this cutting off my circulation. I was more afraid of the whooping than losing my finger. <laughs> he took a pair of tin snips and cut it right off. 
and two little clips. Bing, bing. He looked at me, see, was that hard? And so that's that a lesson I never forgot, but I'm trying to avoid conflict. I'm trying to avoid it. And running around, probably could have lost my finger if it had kept changing colors like it was. You know? But God, will, he will find you. My second point, what will your last words or thoughts be? We just went over David's last words. What do you think your last words are going to be? Will your last words be, oh man, I shouldn't have did it? Or will your last words be, Lord, I dismiss my soul. Take it. You know, I've done the best I can. I didn't say I lived a perfect life, but I've done the best I could. You know? My last point, <laughs> bought sense is the best sense. Wisdom is above all. It says, it's been said, when you know better, you do better. And when you know better and do wrong anyway, and what's left? When you do something, you know it's wrong, then what's left? So like I said, this message is not about anybody past, but it is future. You know, and I try to be clear. I really do. I've been preaching that for, what, 24 years. My message hadn't changed. I still had the same standards. I still have. And I'm not bragging about me being super saved or nothing like that. That's just a fact. I, I'm a person that thinks in black and white. You know, I, I don't like the color outside the lines. You know, when you got a coloring book and people all outside the lines, that drives me crazy. I can't, you know, a little kid, I can't teach him how to color. Because seeing it over the line is going to drive me, you know, be, no, no, this is the way you got to do uh, If there's instructions, when I buy something, I read the instruction book. Even if it's in Japanese, I look at the picture. But I, you know, I, I just have a pattern in my life. I like to do things a certain way. In, in decent and in order. Amen. So that's the message today. The message for you is do you understand it ain't about you? It's not about you. It's about him. And if you're a Christian, always remember him. There are no perfect Christians. There are no perfect sinners. There's no complete sinners, you know. There's, there's always more room for more sin, <laughs> you know. But the thing is, if you love God, you serve God. Amen? Amen. 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 Is anybody here that doesn't know the Lord is your Savior? <laughs> Just remember, your understanding is never the last word of God. God don't think that you got it all. Amen. Well, Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your spirit going before us. I thank you for your grace and mercy. And I thank you, Lord, that you are everything that we need and we should not suffer anything. And may your spirit go before us in all things. And Lord, we just live to please you. We're not trying to please man and we're not trying to please anyone else, Lord. I just want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, when I get to where my reward is being issued. And Lord, I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice that they will come and realize that God is the final word. God is the final one to judge. I can't judge heart, minds, and motives. I can't judge intent, but God can judge it all. And we pray for mercy for all those. And anyone that's saying and doing anything against us, we pray mercy for them, Lord. We, we don't want anything to come spiritually upon them. We wish them all the best. I pray that they prosper in health, their family prosper in health. And Lord, I pray that if anything I've done, that you forgive me of my sins. And Father, we lay it all before you, and I just wait on a day for you to judge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, he's risen. Will you? If you need prayer, we'll pray for you.